Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today we continue our journey as we travel around art, the current largest commercially available jigsaw puzzle in the world from Graphica. If you haven't seen the other videos I've done in this series, I'll leave all the links in the description below. I suggest you at least watch the unboxing video just to get an overview of the entirety of the puzzle. Now today we continue, this will be bag number 12 and it's section 27 and it's another bookshelf section. It has this big lovely white armchair that I can't wait to do. Lots of little trinkets, I'll do close-ups. There's like a spyglass and a map. Oh, I can't wait to do this section. This is the third of the four bookshelf sections that I will be completing. If I take out my large panoramic poster here, you can see the bookshelf at the other end there. So I've already done two sections of the bookshelf over here. I'm doing this lower corner. So this jigsaw section will have two border edges. And I've already completed nine sections of the jigsaw puzzle over here at the start. So that's bag number 12, section 27 is what we're working on today. Another library section. Now, I have a bit of information. One of my viewers named Ama, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, mentioned to me that one of their favorite brands of jigsaw puzzles is Bluebird. I've never heard of Bluebird. And uh, they said, yeah, well, you can find a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle of that first bookshelf section you completed. To which I was a bit curious because I thought that Graphica hired Mathieu Martin specifically to design this bookshelf section for this specific large jigsaw puzzle. So I went on Bluebird's website and the first thing I noticed was the website was pretty much identical to Graphica's apart from like coloration. They have different jigsaw puzzles for sale, but they do in fact have a thousand piece um, jigsaw puzzle of this section of the library. I believe it's called the Vintage Library. So I contacted Graphica and long story short, Graphica and Bluebird are owned by the same like parent company and they did release this section of the bookshelf as a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle, kind of like a nod or a wink to Graphica and it is called I believe the Vintage Library. Now my videos are not sponsored or affiliated, I'm just giving you the information so I will leave a link down below if you want to buy you know part of this large jigsaw puzzle and if you like the bookshelf section more than welcome check them out the link will be below where you can find it and I do believe other websites and stores actually sell Bluebird brands I wasn't just familiar with them but yeah the only difference I think is that there's not the beige on the side and I believe the floor is darker but the rest it is definitely the same section of the bookshelf so Bluebird brand also, what I've noticed, very colorful and bright jigsaw puzzles. There were so many I would love to buy. And they have loads of fine art jigsaw puzzles. I saw the Mona Lisa. Actually, I saw quite a few that appear in this travel around art jigsaw puzzle. Quite a few of these masterpieces as thousand piece jigsaw puzzles under the Bluebird brand. So, more options for you if you're interested in doing any. Um, I'm not holding up the bag with the pieces because on top there's two sections of four pieces already connected and I feel that's a gift from the puzzle fairies. So I'm going to gently open this puzzle, take them out and there you go. I'll already have eight pieces put together. <laughs> I know, smarter, not harder. <laughs> Anyways, that's about it. I thought it was quite interesting, the things that I'm learning. Now with the voiceover on this puzzle, I'll be answering your Q&A questions. So thank you so much to everybody that's left questions. I think I have enough questions for this section of the library and the next section of the library. So I don't need any more questions at this point in time. Um, also, thank you so much to Ama for pointing out that she found the bookshelf library section, you know, on its own. I think that's just great. I really appreciate it. I appreciate so much the interaction I'm having with you all. This is great. I know I'm sitting here talking to a camera, but I feel I'm sitting here and actually talking to people. I'm talking to you all, everyone who's liking my content. I, I just really appreciate it. So without further ado, let's get to work on bag 12, section 27, as we travel around art. 
So the first thing I want to address is my name. It'll appear on the screen right now, Donna Louise, spelled as all one word, no space, no hyphen, no capital L, and no, I do not go by DL. To me, that stands out for down low. I really do prefer to be called Donna Louise. Now, here's a specific question about the travel around art jigsaw puzzle from Janet Paget and Twin Marlene. They had similar questions, and I apologize in advance for the mispronunciation of everybody's names or YouTube handles. They wanted to know, like, how long do I spend puzzling per session, and over how many days does it take each section of the puzzle to do and for the longer times do I do it over multiple days and whatnot so basically yeah the fastest section I've done was over two days I think the longest took me five days I prefer to sit down and at least have an hour to two hours of puzzling time per section there's been times I've been interrupted and I started and it's been less than half an hour, but I try to at least have a good hour to two at a time. I do prefer longer periods. I find once I get into the flow and get going, that's the best. And I try, if I only know I have like 20 minutes, I won't bother. I wait till I have longer periods of time to sit down per session to puzzle. Now here's some general puzzling questions from a bunch of people. The first one, um, Anna Leah Franklin and Jen the Canadian Duchy had similar questions. Could you tell us a bit about your history of doing puzzles? Like, how much did you puzzle before starting this channel? Do you put together puzzles as a kid or as a teenager? And so when did basically I start puzzling? Now my first memory of doing a jigsaw puzzle, I remember being a teenager and I sat down one Saturday afternoon and it was probably maybe a 500 piece puzzle and I put it together very quickly. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, okay, I'm pretty good at this. I'm sure I did puzzles as a young, young child, but then as a teenager, my mom loved doing jigsaw puzzles. She always had tons of jigsaw puzzles on the go. It was basically as an adult six, five, six years ago that I really got back into doing jigsaw puzzles big time. So I've been puzzling regularly for the past five, five and a half or so years. The next question is from Sevilla. Do the total times mentioned for each puzzle include the time spent sorting the pieces or just the actual puzzling time? The total times that I mentioned do, does include the sorting the pieces, unless I say build time only. But typically the time that I post includes sorting and assembly. The following is from Anna Fonseca. Fonseca? How long do you spend every week puzzling? Now this is a bit tricky to answer. It's gonna be a bit of a range. I say a minimum of 20 hours, definitely, and could go as high as 30 hours. The following is from Yvonne. What do you do while puzzling? Do you listen to music or audiobooks or is it quiet? So I love musicals, but the thing is, I cannot watch anything while I puzzle. So the TV is kinda behind me. And I've tried to like put on documentaries or movies, but I get distracted if it's something I haven't seen before. So I tend to watch, or I should say listen to, musicals that I've already seen that I love and enjoy, and I literally just have them playing on repeat. The following is from Married Bueno. What is the biggest puzzle you've ever put together besides the travel around art one? That would be the large map that you see in the background of my intros and outros of most of my videos. It is from Ravensburger. It's a 5,000 piece. I believe it's called Antique World Map. And I loved it. It all came in one bag. And the funny thing was, I had that wall and I knew I wanted to find something big and epic to put on that wall. I ordered that puzzle and it arrived like a week or two before we went into lockdown here in New Zealand. So I did it over our first major lockdown. The next question is from Dark Girl 131313. 13, 13. How many puzzles do I own or have I done? I currently have 39 framed jigsaw puzzles on display around the house. I have 18 mini magnet fridge puzzles. In my to-do pile, there's currently 17. 
I do have the travel around art, which is in progress. And then I have 13 jigsaw puzzles in my permanent collection that I'm not going to glue. Those are like the color gradient ones and the Ravensburger crypt one, the murder mystery ones. Some of those in the 17 to do pile will, um, a few of those are meant to be framed and go on my wall. A few will go into my permanent collection and then others will all pass on to friends or op shops. The next question is from Anna Lee Franklin, Jennifer LL, and Mary Bueno. They kind of all ask the similar questions as to what are my favorite styles of puzzles, what kind of puzzles I enjoy, and what factors draw me into buying a puzzle. The main factor that draws me into buying a puzzle is the image on the box. Um, the favorite kind of puzzles that I like to do right now, I'm really into color gradient and solid color like the Crips and color blocks. I'm really enjoying them and funky shaped ones like circle puzzles or the pieces have intricate different shapes. The styles, well it's more easy for me to tell you what I don't like. I don't like when Thora barks while I'm trying to do the voiceover, but um, I don't like um, landscape puzzles or photography images. Those are not typically my style. The next question is from Elusive Glue Jeff and Dark Girl 131313. 13 13. They asked, do I have a favorite company that produces jigsaw puzzles or a favorite kind of brand? Um, the favorite brand, I do have one. Now I must admit there's a lot of brands I've not tried. So just look at the brands I've posted on my YouTube channel and from those, there's actually a brand I've yet to do a video on, but it are, they are pinned to jigsaw puzzles. P-I-N-T-O-O. -O. They're a plastic jigsaw puzzle. I currently have four of them in my to-do pile and I will be doing videos on them. They are by far my favorite, favorite, favorite brand. Love them. That doesn't mean that won't change in the future because there's so many brands I have yet to do. The next question is from Jennifer LL. I'd love if you talk about your puzzling pet peeves. My main pet peeve is when a puzzle fit is so loose that if you're working on a jigsaw puzzle and you put your hand down on a section and you're maybe leaning over to look at something and you pick your hand up and the puzzle comes up with it and all the pieces fall apart drives me crazy when the fit is so loose that don't even think of touching the puzzle because everything's going to go everywhere i do not like glossy pieces definitely figured that out the next question is from joel 22 have you ever experienced starting on a puzzle you found interesting at the time but somehow gave up solving it because it wasn't what you had expected I haven't, although I've been very particular as to which jigsaw puzzles I do. It's only been since starting the YouTube channel that I've expanded my repertoire and there have been a few puzzles that I wanted to stop doing but I kept finishing them just to do videos and content for the channel. One being like that banana puzzle. Oh, if I was just doing that maybe for myself I probably would have stopped. The last two questions are from fellow human Harold. What was your motivation to start a YouTube channel about puzzles and anything planned for the upcoming 1000 subscriber milestone? The reason why I started the YouTube channel is I ran out of wall space. I was, like I said, being very selective as to which jigsaw puzzles I would buy because I wanted to glue them, mount them, put them on the wall, frame them. And then I ran out of wall space and even considered trying to put them on the ceiling, but I thought that was kind of ridiculous. So I thought, well, if I enjoy watching jigsaw puzzle videos and I enjoy jigsaw puzzling, so why don't I start a jigsaw puzzle channel and then I can buy a variety of different puzzles, not necessarily to frame, and that'll be a justification as to why I need to buy more puzzles. <laughs> so that, that's basically it. As for the 1000 subscriber milestone, I will complete that thousand piece impossibles butterfly puzzle that's sitting on my shelf and it's been sitting there for a long time. That one's going to be tricky. It's the puzzle that doesn't have an edge. It has five extra pieces. The pattern's very challenging. You don't have a full image of it. So that'll be my celebration. As I'm filming this, I'm just over 800 subscribers, so we're getting there. Thank you to everyone who submitted questions. For the next voiceover, the questions will be on a more personal topic. And another section of the puzzle is nearly done. So I've encountered my first missing piece 
And to be honest, I'm not as upset about it as I thought I might be. I did this section of the puzzle over two days. It took me 11 hours and 33 minutes. And I leave the pieces in the bag as you see, sort and build as I go. I've looked everywhere. I've looked on the floor, under the lounge set, in my pockets. I didn't vacuum over those two days, but still I checked the vacuums. I got hubby down on the floor. He looked everywhere. We just can't find it. So whether or not I lost it or it was missing from the bag, I can't say. Now we have a plan. I'm not going to contact Graphica yet. I was going to wait till the end of the doing all the sections before letting them know how many pieces I'm missing. Hopefully this is the first and last one because you got to realize it's not that easy to just send me something over here to New Zealand. It just takes a lot of time. And so I figured let's try to find a solution. When I do the next section of the jigsaw puzzle, I will find the exact piece because they're all cut from the same pattern. Take that piece, make sure it fits pretty good, and I'll ask my hubby to cut out from either thick cardboard or cardstock something, the shape of the piece. I'm gonna try to take a high resolution photo of the poster of that area and try to scale the image and see if I can cut it out, stick it onto the piece and make it look somewhat good. I was hoping that if I was missing a piece, it would be like the plain background beige pieces, but this one has got like a black book with gold writing and part of, a, of the map, so it's quite detailed. If it doesn't look so great, my hubby said that he would just try to freehand paint it. He, he's quite good at painting, but I think overall, when you're gonna stand back and look at a 54,000 piece jigsaw puzzle, I doubt anyone's gonna be able to go, oh wait, look at that piece down there, something's off. Like, I really don't think anyone's gonna notice it. The next section of the bookshelf, when I do that, hopefully we'll have that piece sorted by then. Then I'll do a display and I'll lay out all four bookshelf sections together side by side so we can see the entirety of it. It's absolutely beautiful. I really do love these sections. I hope you enjoyed the voiceover. Those were basically puzzling questions. For the next bookshelf section, there'll be questions more on a personal note. I do really can't emphasize enough how much I enjoy these sections because they're different. It's something different. And when I get down to those last like hundred pieces that are pretty much all brown, I always worry. I'm like, oh no, here we go. But they actually go quite quickly because I think there's enough detail and shading and lines that it's really not such a big deal. And it just feels like I organize the pieces, pay attention to what's on them, and boom, 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 there you go, I'm done. So 11 hours and 33 minutes, not bad at all. Well, we're not gonna keep the timer ticking until I finish the puzzle to put in the last piece, but once we create that missing last piece, I'll definitely do some close-ups, show you what we did to make the piece, put the piece in, and then do some more photos of it fully complete. But yeah, overall, I still really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I also really appreciate everyone that submitted questions for the Q&A. Thank you so very much. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing. And until next time, ciao!